This video is for you who are in Don Smith's group. Whether you're there personally face-to-face -face, or you're participating online remotely. I've already made many videos starting last year, more than a year ago, documenting the development of his group from the time when he joined himself with his demon in his dream and why exactly it's a demon, which is not your place to decide. It's not your place. That is the place of a commissioned leader who's in good standing, not only with the church, but with the Lord God. That's me. That decision's been made. That has already been cast, that judgment on Don Smith. His leadership was removed. He has no leadership in the kingdom of God. He's renegade. He's building his own little kingdom there in Louisiana. When you go out on the street and you yell through your bullhorns at people who are standing there waiting for a bus, you're not doing it for Jesus. You're doing it for Don Smith. You're doing it to add to your group that he rules over, and he rules over. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing, and this is a travesty. This is something you really should take to heart. You really should take it to heart. Because Don Smith has put your feet in the fires of hell, and you're not even aware of it. I'm going to explain why. So hear me out. If you love Jesus, you love the truth. If you will not listen to the truth, you do not love Jesus. So hear me out. Mike Cutler, I'm going to focus on you. You are betraying your wife's confidence in you as your wife. You shameful worm. You worm of a man. You're not her husband. You're behaving as a worm who's being put on a hook as bait by Don Smith. You're supposed to uphold her confidence in you of the things that are spoken intimately in your home. The things in private between you and your wife. You don't go blabbing those to the group. You don't go blabbing those to Don Smith. Shame on you. You know what you've done. You have sinned against your wife who is a treasure from God given to you. As the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a great treasure from God. You have sinned against the treasure given to you from God. You have sinned. The sin of gossip. You have gossiped to Don Smith, who you already know, joined himself with a demon. You know that. I'm not saying it because I hate Don Smith. I don't hate Don Smith. I feel sad for him. I feel sorry for him. And I feel very protective of you and especially the spouses out there who refuse to come to his group, who know better. You who are going to his group are foolish and ignorant. You refuse to budge. You refuse to listen to the truth. You refuse to listen to the scriptures that I've read over and over. 1 Corinthians 7 especially. Even if you think that your spouse is unbelieving, your spouse is not unclean. God says that the believing spouse sanctifies the unbelieving spouse. That's what it says. If you say otherwise, if you believe Don Smith, when he swears to God that it's the other way around, you call God a liar. Don Smith has brainwashed you into believing that God is lying about it. Because God wrote it right here. He wrote it. Read it for yourself. Open it up. 1 Corinthians 7, open it with me. If you love Jesus, you love the truth. If you will not listen to the truth, you do not love Jesus. Stop calling yourself a Christian. 1 Corinthians 7. I'd rather you love the truth than to stop calling yourself a Christian. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 13. Open and read with me. I'm reading from the New King James Version. For the un This is verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. That means made clean. Sanctified means clean before God's eyes. Sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife 
is sanctified by the husband. I apologize, I didn't have my microphone on, so I'm going to try to correct that audio so you can hear it better for the first part of this video. But as I've just read to you, and you hopefully have read it yourself in your Bible, it says 1 Corinthians 7, 14, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean, but now they are holy. Don Smith has lied about God. He has. It says clearly right here, and I pointed it out in my videos, many videos, and he continued to tell you that it's not true. And not only that, but I've heard through my sources that some of you have even told others that what Don says is right and what the Bible says is not true. You know what you've done. You know what you've done. Don Smith has tricked you into calling God a liar. Now, you may not have said exactly the Bible is not true. But by saying that what Don Smith said is true, and that what is read simply and plainly right here in the text is not true, you are calling God a liar. Because these are the very words that God put and swore by are true. I'm going to tell you one more thing, is that Mike Cutler is a sinner. Don Smith is convincing him to sin. When he came back to the group this time, he was sinning because he was exhibiting cowardice. And you don't think that being a coward is a sin? Yeah. It's the first group of people who are being thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. Jesus said it, not me. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. Right here it says in Revelation 21a. This is Jesus speaking. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, very first one on the list, what about the cowardly and all the other people listed here, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. They will be eternally dead. That means not non-existent. They will exist, but they will exist in perpetual death. It's a second death. It will, it's irrevocable. It will never be undone. The cowards will be the first ones thrown into this lake of burning sulfur, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's what it says. The smoke from their torment will rise forever and ever. The cowards, Mike Cutler, Mike Cutler, you will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur for going back to Don's group because you were a coward when you should have been standing with your wife and protecting her. Instead, you exhibited an example that was cowardice. Now, that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is that Don Smith convinced you to sin, not only by becoming a coward, but also by gossiping about your wife. You gossiped about your wife, and he's got you gossiping about your spouses. All of you. All of you. He's got you gossiping, tattletelling on your spouses to Don. It's none of his business. He has no business knowing what goes on in your home. John Calvin tried the same kind of shenanigans. In Geneva, they gave him control of the city. And he was there trying to find out what was going on secretly in the homes between the spouses, but also in their confidential communication. And it got so bad that people finally rose up and they chased him out of the city. When are you going to rise up and chase Don Smith out? When are you going to rise up and leave this snake? Oh, but he, he speaks the scriptures all the time. So you think that just because he speaks the scriptures means that he's true? Means that he's hearing God? Means that he's not fornicating with a demon? I showed you 
and two other videos, a man who's a Mormon, who was so extreme, the Mormons reject him. And he wasn't the one who started the group. But when he took over, he turned it into a bona fide cult. He's in prison. He was speaking scripture too. Constantly speaking scripture. He's writing songs. There were scriptural songs. He was speaking scripture ease all the time. Every phrase out of his mouth was some phrase from scripture. Phrase here, phrase here, phrase there. They're not even connected in the scripture in any way. But he would use them as replacements for English phrases in order to deceive the people into thinking that he is holier, more righteous, more connected to God than, than them, because he can rattle these things off from Scripture and tie them together as a way to communicate with you in code. Yeah? It's exactly what Don Smith does. You know what I was in the military? I was a code breaker. <laughs> I was an analyst. So when I look at what he's doing, it's exactly that. The short of it is this. Don Smith claims that he is not sinning anymore. And yet he has sinned. You can watch this video on gossip. He gossiped to you about me. He had no permission from me to talk about anything of my private things that we talked about on the phone when I was helping him with his group because he couldn't control his group with Wes. But nevertheless, he made up things also about private things that aren't real about me. So he also slandered. So he has sinned twice while saying that he has stopped sinning. He has gossiped and he has slandered. On top of that, because he said he has stopped sinning, while having sinned, he has also lied. That means he's sinned three sins, minimum, since he has said that he has stopped sinning. On top of that, he's getting you to sin. He is convincing you to sin the sin of gossip. And then for you to say that you don't sin anymore. I know, I've heard. Those of you who are gossiping against your spouses, I've also heard that you say that you have stopped sinning. That means you are also lying. So Don has got you committing two out of three of the sins that he commits against others. And he's convincing all of you to do it. He's not helping you to stop sinning. He's trapping you into sinning and he's binding your ankles in the fires of hell. This is no joke. This is no ex exaggeration at all. When he has convinced you, not only that it's okay for you to commit those sins, but that somehow you're right in committing those sins, he has shackled your feet in the fires of hell. This is not an exaggeration. This is a reality of your condition, your situation. You'd better get out of there if you can. And you better flee quick. Tell your spouse, say, I want out. But well, we got to have a place to go to. And if that's the situation that you're in, contact me. And we will arrange for you so that you have some fellowship with real believers who are not cult leaders, who are not trying to shackle your feet in hell and build his own little kingdom, use you in the process and cause you to sin against the Lord Jesus Christ. I have to tell you, this is one of the worst examples I've seen of this personally. May the Lord have mercy on your souls.